Welcome back to the TSL3 sponsored by PokerStrategy.com. We are here in game number four of series number one. We have spawning in the bottom right, Adele Scott as the blue Protoss up against the ropes, taking on the stoic Empire Kaz in the top right as the red Terran. And, uh, you know, Cass has just shown us some amazing play. I know a lot of uh, Terran players have been upset recently, saying, you know, it is so hard to play against Protoss, but what better Protoss to show off your skill against than Adel Scott, a hero of France and Europe and really the world alike. An amazing Protoss, but Cass, I feel like, is just making so many better decisions that uh, Adel Scott is having a hard time keeping up with that. Yeah, it's been very interesting to see because Cuz is not really, you know, he's not hard countering uh, Adele Scott. It's not like he's tailored to build, you know, you're weak against this unit composition, so once I get this, you lose. No, he's just playing the standard Marine Marauder Medivac, eventually transitioning into Ghosts and heavy upgrades, but he's just has such great decision making as you hit it right on the head, and that's really what Adele Scott is losing to. And I, I also have to uh, mention. Cass has some of the most serious Terran micro that, I, I mean, macro, well, his micro is amazing as well, but his macro is unbelievable. This guy gets insane economies going and keeps his money down. He isn't queuing off a ton of units, so he has more units right. than I think uh, Adel Scott's going to be used to for most of the time, whereas Adel Scott's uh, macro has been just a little bit iffy, especially in that last game. Yeah, so while well, we have very standard builds starting off here, the barracks and the refinery, Meanwhile, uh, going up against the gateway and assimilator of uh, Adele Scott, I just want to take a moment to remind everyone to visit teamliquid.net slash raffle and to ri remind everyone how handsome Artosis is. Why don't you go ahead and drop some knowledge on the viewers <laughs> and let them know where they can find more of your stuff. Uh, definitely check me out at youtube.com forward slash Artosis TV. Uh, I love to make stuff there. Of course, my Twitter, uh, twitter.com forward slash Artosis. Uh, yeah, please check those out. I would appreciate it. Thank you. And I've heard uh, the GSL is pretty cool, so if you haven't seen that, you oh, can yeah, go that, to GOMTV.net uh, as well and see Artosis I, and his handsome mug. That's right, and my uh, nerd hetero life partner who I'm cheating on right <laughs> now with with my original casting partner, Chill. Or my semi-original. No one remembers Gento, though. We can just forget about him. <laughs> oh, I remember. We've got, uh, we've got <laughs> the Nexus uh, going down for Adele Scott. Very quick Nexus here as his... Uh, cybernetic score finishes, he begins the warp gate research and gonna get a stalker, I've got to imagine there it goes. No chrono on that stalker, so he feels safe, and this is probably the fastest scout we've seen from Adele Scott. Four minute scout. Yeah. Once. Yeah, I don't know what's going on, man. He's not he's not feeling safe and solid here in his style. <laughs> it's madness. How is this happening? A Reaper popping out, but he has seen the command center and now seeing the Reaper. He's gonna know exactly what's going on, and that's basically what's been going on all along. Cass loves to get that early Reaper so that he can react and make his decisions correctly. I love that about Cass. Does a lot of scouting, a lot of proper reactions, and uh, a lot of macroing. I mean, Cass is like the Terran that I wish I was. <laughs> you can see uh, the Stimpak research beginning for Kaz on that first tech lab, following up with a very standard two barracks and probably going to transition into a factory and eventually starport. Afterwards, meanwhile, Adele Scott throwing down two additional gateways. He's got a sentry coming out of uh, his original gateway. Did not get that zealot out as he continues to chrono boost the warp gate. And uh, really just, they're not really putting on any aggression, not doing anything too fancy, just feeling each, each other out. As the Reaper going to scout top left, not going to find Adele Scott there. SCV still going around the long way, has not found Adele Scott thus far. No, he has not, but, uh, you know, I, I love the information he's getting. He's holding a watchtower with that Marine, uh, one that's going to see a lot of various attacks that can come in, only a very small corridor where Adel Scott could possibly sneak by. So uh, a lot of information being gained. The SCV going into the natural of Adel Scott, seeing basically what's going on. No gases there, a bunch of probes, a single stalker. That gives you a lot more information than you would think it does. Reaper going to jump up and try to take out a probe. Looks like it's just going to scratch a paint. Oh my god, comes back for blood and takes out uh, the mechanical probe before being sniped off by the stalker. So very nice there, uh, getting some value out of it. Some people would argue better to keep the Reaper alive for scouting or, or holding a watchtower, but I feel like Empire Cause is active enough on the map. He'll be able to make up for that, no problem. Now dropping his factory, transitioning into the very standard builds we've seen Cause start out with. 
Yeah, and uh, you know that's that's one of the beautiful things about playing a ton of games with a very similar style. We've seen him with pretty much the same play each game, and he's going to know all the branches of that just perfectly. He's going to know exactly what to do in all these different situations, and that cannot actually be overstated how, how good that is. That's, that's part of the reason why he's making all these amazing decisions against Adel Scott that we don't see from Adel Scott quite as much. Adel Scott, looking a little off here, he's dropped his forge, but he's not approaching 100 gas, so he can't do anything with it. Uh, now getting a second assimilator and now getting aggressive yet again while he's floating a thousand minerals So I'd like to see him drop this third nexus. Yes, he does drop it So now I don't mind this at, at, as all as long as he does not attack Just push forward put a little bit of pressure on while you get your third nexus up for free Yeah, and you know this doesn't actually cost him anything to sit right there It's actually scaring Cass. You notice he pulled SCVs up for a second He has three bunkers up and that's gonna slow everything down. Yeah, he can get those bunkers back at uh, full full discount and um, that's all nice and good, but that's 300 minerals less to spend on anything else he wants to buy right now, such as more barracks, such as a quicker command center. So Adel Scott doing a great job forcing his extra nexus in there while making Empire Cass a, a little scaredy cat. <laughs> yeah, uh, plus one armor now being begun for, uh, for Adel Scott. He's finally started that, and only one forge this game. So until he gets complete map control, he's gonna stay on that one forge. And a subtle change here, for uh, Kaz, he's only got the single uh, production out of the starport, hasn't decided to wait for a reactor before getting that medevac out. So we've got a Marauder drop heading back to the third base of Adele Scott, and looks like Adele Scott is well aware of this timing, pulling his entire army back. He may be able to get this oh. medevac. These stalkers standing right there, all he has to do is target that medevac, and things are going to go poorly for Kaz, and goes oh. down! Beautiful move, and suddenly Adel Scott pulls way ahead. That was like a deciding moment in the game. So, so important. Adel Scott gets his third up, destroys one of the first medevacs and four very important marauders of Cass. And Cass, well, he's just started his third command center. His production facilities aren't as quick as they could be because, well, he had to build three bunkers. He was a little bit scared. So Adel Scott, just in beautiful control of this game, he is getting those upgrades. In fact, he's getting a second forge. Blink on the way. Four more warp gates being warped in. Uh, and as those finish up, he is going to be so safe from any attacks that Cass puts on him. Yeah, really hitting his stride on this big map. Actually, Kaz is pushing out a little bit. I'm not sure I like this, but he has the medevac. He has the stim and the concussive shells ready. Wants to put on a little bit of pressure, I suppose, while he tries to take his third base, but he's got to be careful doesn't get absolutely crushed, and here we see what he's actually intending to do. Loading up the medevac, swinging around to the natural, where there are a lot of units waiting for it, and he's got the majority of his army, Kaz, that is, sitting at the watchtower, so if he can draw Adel Scott into the main base, then he can hit a timing to run in and maybe kill some probes, doing the old two-prong attack that's worked so well through the history of StarCraft. Indeed it has. A little Nada-esque there. Uh, of course, this guy already wiped the floor with players like that, but he is coming in with these two medevacs, looks like one's going to the main's mineral line, the other one going to the expansion, a cannon is up at the expansion, the main not having any cannon, but Adel Scott has a huge army, and sending it over towards that third base, the third base is where he's being dropped, first he's going to blink in, kill that medevac, but at the same time, the drop in the main is clearing up a lot of pros, and there he goes, he does see it, starts warping in some units, but he's going to need more than just a zealot and a stalker. Meanwhile, the rest of the army for Kaz tried to stim and run to the natural that's being repelled by the majority of the forces from Adele Scott. The force in the main base still going to work on that Nexus, actually chasing away all the probes, only a single stalker there. Adele Scott needs to get a cooldown finished on these warp gates so he can start bringing in more units. And there it is, a lot of value Kaz got out of that. And look how aggressive Adele Scott is moving forward all the way into the natural of uh, Kaz. Yeah, it looks like this is one of his favorite things to do. I think he's going to wait for Zealot Charge to finish, or maybe not. Plus one and Zealot Charge both very close to done, but he is just going to go for it. And some interesting force fields. I feel like he may have uh, not really wanted to do that. You want to put him behind the units. Um, but yeah, that, that drop by Empire Cast did a lot of damage, whereas this counterattack not doing so much, and suddenly Cast is in a supply lead. How did this happen? I don't know, man. This is absolutely wild, but Charge just about to finish, and that's exactly what he wants. Well, he's just going to go up and engage. Nice Guardian Shields, but uh, Cass looks like he is going to have enough to hold this off. 
yeah, actually getting flanked by the SCVs bringing up, and I'm surprised in that lull that uh, Adele Scott didn't just move north a little bit to scout the third base of Empire, cause that command center is missing some HP, so it looks like it was under attack by something, but uh, the main army did not go up there to finish that off, so... Uh, Empire Kaz getting a lot of value there out of that flank and securing his third base. And now Adele Scott's got to feel a little bit uncomfortable. Yeah, he certainly should. He's actually way behind his fly right now, 92 to 136. And that's not where you want to be when you're going gateway units against Marine Marauder Medevac. Obviously, when you don't have a ton of units, they can kite you for days and days. And here we go. We're going to see some of that. And the Zealots very smartly moving away. But the Stim Marines and Marauders catching a few, tagging those Zealots taking them out, and Empire Cast just putting on a clinic of TDP. Yeah, stimming forward, Stim actually wearing off now as he takes out the pylon. He's able to hit these two warp gates from the hologram. That is not a good situation for Adele Scott to be in. Adele Scott moving forward with the two armor on those zealots, blinking forward to take out some more Terran forces, and this is the Adele Scott we're used to seeing as those zealots flank from the low ground. A lot of damage and being done by these zealots, and a lot of damage being soaked up as the uh, the Stalkers continue to blink forward and deal tons of damage. Medevac's going down. Look how far these Zealots have chased these, this army away. And look at the Stutter Step Micro by Empire Kaz. This is insane. So much value gotten. But finally chased down and taken out. And after that battle, the dust settles. We're at 111 supply for Kaz. 98 for Adele Scott. That was pretty wild, Chill. I don't even know what to say. I loved the Zealot flank by Adel Scott. Beautiful pylon placement. Uh, you know, that's one great reason to have pylons just kind of everywhere around the map so you can do cute little moves like that. And his upgrades really playing such a vital role there. But again, I like the trade that Empire Cast made. Yeah, he lost a lot of units, but those medevacs, they did not have a lot of energy in them. Uh, you know, he had already gotten a lot of damage in, but suddenly the supplies are a lot closer. He's going to have to be very careful about his upgrades going forward here. And I'm wondering, what is Adele Scott's follow-up plan? Is he going to take a fourth base, or is he going to transition into High Templar? We can see he's just working on the, the upgrades, actually, as he's at 2-2 now, and just making a lot of gateway units. When I look at the production tab, it only shows pylons for Adele Scott, as he just continues to warp in an endless stream of gateway units. Well, it's 144 spike, it's 159. It looks like he may be going for this third base, but there is a sensor tower, so Cass is going to be in position. Will he be able to hold this? It looks like Adel Scott may not want to attack it, but he has a ton of units here, Chill. Some good force fields and a guardian shield later. Uh, we may see him be able to beat that army once again. 2-2 is on the way for Cass, but already vastly superior upgrades for Adel Scott in play. And it looks like he is going to go for this third base a little bit more. And as you said, he's already dealt some damage to that orbital, so I feel like that's something he may be able to snipe. Yeah, we can see in the main base, actually, Adele Scott dumped all his Chrono Boost onto his warp gate, so really focusing on just making a lot of units as he puts up the Guardian oh, oh, Shield. Oh, oh, oh. He's now drawn the army away as he can continue to push in to the natural cause, trying to stim and run forward. We've got no force fields that would really help out the Protoss in this situation. Only Stalkers remaining as the Zealots all go down to the Marine Marauder fire with 1-1 one, one upgrades, and Del Scott trying to dance around with his Blink Micro, trying to get in a good situation, but a beautiful concave for Empire Cos, as more Zealots from Adele Scott trying to flank in, and this is a huge battle for both players, and looks like Adele Scott is going to get the worst of it as he tries to blink out, trying to blink out the majority of his forces, and after the dust settles, 96 supply for Adele Scott, and 116 for Empire Cos. Looks like Adele Scott still wants to get aggressive. Yeah, he does. You know, he killed a lot of SCVs there, which is nice, but let's not forget he did put himself into a flank scenario. But here he goes. He's going to hit that third base while Cass is cleaning up a few zealots in the main, and that may be the diversion he needs. He needs to target down that, that command center, but he's not really going to do it, just kind of hitting some more SCVs. And as the units come out, he's going to have to run out of there, lose a few zealots. But he is still dealing some damage. Definitely does have a slightly better economy. 48 probes to 32 SCVs. Uh, I don't know, man. This is It's such a wild, action-packed game. Looks like he's going to go in through the other side once again. And here we go. Blinking in. Has a good number of zealots. Has some good uh, sentries. But, oh, there's just too many Marines and Marauders in here for him to battle with all these bruised-up stalkers. 
you know, the way Adele Scott is playing, look at how much damage has been dealt to these Marines and Marauders. They're all deep in the, the yellow and the orange, now all going for the red if they stim. If Adele Scott could get one nice flank with Zealots, he would be able to take out these forces, but Empire Cause just not letting it happen, continuing to stim forward and be aggressive and chasing down the retreating units of Adele Scott. So Kaz has now completely secured uh, his natural, and he will feel largely com more or a lot more comfortable now that he's dealt with that pylon and dri driven back Adele Scott. Yeah, he, he certainly will. Now at El Scott, I mean, his army consists of five stalkers, two sentries, warping in a bunch more sentries now, but uh, kind of a hard position to come back from here. Let's not forget yes. that uh, as bases get mined out for Empire Cast, he can actually float away command centers if need be. And that's a pretty big deal when both players are at each other's throats like this because suddenly you've been microing and macroing so much that you look back and you have no money for a command center or a nexus. Uh, Adel Scott is running out of mineral patches right now. His income is about to drop down to almost nothing. Whereas Cass, you know, he's just floated down a new command center to some new patches. And even though he's going to mine out his main and natural a little bit quicker, his economy is still going to be a lot bigger. He's still got 60 more supply. And he's looking like he's in a pretty commanding lead at this exact moment in the game. Yeah, Adele Scott is starting to look a little bit starved here as we look at all his mineral patches, as you mentioned, looking very, very uh, scarce. He's trying to drop that fourth base at the 6 o'clock, but like magic, the Marine of Kaz is going to move over there and see that, or it's not going to see, it's just going to stand right there where it can't see. But anyway, the point is, eventually he will see. There he goes. And with complete map control here, Kaz can choose. Does he want to force the issue and try to attack into the main base of Adele Scott? Or does he just want to go over and crush that expansion? You know, it's a, it's a good question. And I would say just send a few units over, hit that expansion. But it looks like he's actually just going to send his full force over here. There are a few field photon cannons. Adele Scott's army is right nearby. And we're going to have to see how his force fields go. He has a lot of energy on those sentries, a ton of sentries in there, but just going to give up the Nexus. Seems like a fine choice, actually. Does not want to attack into there. It's an easy kiting area. Doesn't have a lot of minerals left on those patches. But as is, his probe count is falling. He's sending a ton of probes to that extra base. And Adel Scott, I feel like he's on a clock right now. He can't really defend that other expand if Cass presses the issue. Yeah, I've got to agree. This is just a, a ticking time bomb here when these armies finally going to uh, crash into each other. And looks like this is it. as a stim going forward. Adele Scott trying to retreat to get in a better position, but Kaz is really just chasing him down. He's going to run him across the entire map. Now coming back as Guardian Shield goes up and those Zelts go to work. But with the stim and the 2-2 upgrade on the that uh, Marina Marauder ball, it is just not going to be enough for Adele Scott. As he's getting chased away to his fourth base, trying to blink away. But that's got to be it. Empire Cause now has his sights set on the fourth base of Adele Scott, which is going to completely end the game. Yeah, the DPS of this Marine Marauder Ball, it is just too high, chill. That little amount of Stalker is not going to do very much. And down goes Adele Scott's last mining area. His main has just a few scarce patches left. Cass making yet another command center up at the 12 o'clock. And, uh... You know, there's just, there's nothing here, man. It's 2-2 two, two upgrades to actually 3-2 cast in the lead now. And uh, that's that's where Adel Scott is supposed to shine, is having better upgrades. So at this point, Cass is beating him in absolutely every area, almost four times his supply. It's just a matter of time before we see a GG. Yeah, and the Stalker's actually getting tagged here in the middle of the map, pulled down by the uh, Marauder Concussive Shell. And where is Adel Scott going to run to next? His income is actually... 300 as he's got some patches in the main base but getting very close to zero as he's long distance mining <laughs> for the third base running around with some stalkers showing some nice uh, flashes of micro picking off some medevacs but i doubt that empire cause is going to map if you're going to care too much about that as he's just running around with 94 units in this group yeah that's that's kind of funny man he's like playing musical chairs around that zelnaga watchtower <laughs> But uh, there's absolutely no way he's just showing off his micro right now for us. And we are going to be seeing a GG momentarily here. No doubt about that. I mean, Cass, he has been outplaying Adel Scott all series long. And it looks like he is just going to barrel right through here. The last minerals of Adel being spent. And uh, looks like he's going to counter with his stalkers. Or maybe not. Just kind of walking around in the center. 
Yeah, when when you get deep in a tournament, you know, and you you have a lot invested in it, there's always this moment where you know it's over, but you know you're just trying to compose yourself before you leave. And there's some force fields shutting out or shutting the door on the main base. But I'm gonna miss having Adele Scott in the TSL. It was a pleasure watching him take on QXC and I'm MVP. Showed us a a PVT style that maybe was not well known to a lot of viewers. Oh, he certainly did, man. He's one of the founders of a lot of gateway units, and he has done a great job. But Empire Cast, no doubt in my mind, completely outplaying Adel Scott in the series. And GG, really good mana right there. A good luck to Empire Cast, and Cass has taken the series. What an amazing, outstanding Terran player. You know, he, Kaz just never looks weak. He always looks extremely solid even when he's losing he still looks extremely solid and you know i i'm put myself in the boat of uh i guess ignorant north americans who didn't really know a lot about cows but it looks like the hype is true on this guy's he's gonna steamroll through into the round of four of tsl number three you know, I do love it when the hype is true chill it's always mm. better than when the hype turns out to be nothing <laughs> and cass he has fulfilled that i I, I just got to ask the question, what is the deal with Ukraine? In StarCraft 1, it was Strelok and uh, Demaga and White Raw, three of the best players, one of each uh, one of each race. And now in StarCraft 2, I mean, we still have those three, but now Cass is looking maybe as good or better than all of them. Yeah, it, it's absolutely nuts. And Kaz is going to be playing the winner of our next series. And that's, you know, looking forward to the round of four. That's going to be a ridiculous semifinals because in our next series... We have OGS MC taking on Prey Thorzane, and either one of those would be a fantastic opponent to go up against Empire Cause in the semifinals of this tournament. It certainly would. MC, well, if you don't know him, where have you been? Who are you? Get out of here. No, welcome. Welcome to StarCraft 2. MC is the Kratos <laughs> Protoss. He is an amazing two-time GSL champion. Uh, probably the winning most player in StarCraft 2 thus far, just won a beautiful little dream hack event, doing great in the TSL, just an outstandingly scary Protoss player. Yeah, and he's actually, uh, he's in Europe right now playing in that uh, Copenhagen land, is he not? He is, he's actually in the finals against, guess who, Cass, who we just cast. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, these two guys, pretty darn legit, but that is not to count out Thorazine. He took out a GSL champion already in Fruit Dealer. Amazing play there. Nothing yeah. gimmicky whatsoever. Just outplaying a GSL champion. You know, this this Warcraft 3 youngin just coming into StarCraft 2 <laughs> and dominating. And uh, then he took out TeamLiquid.net's very own Liquid Tyler, uh, my favorite Protoss player in the world. And uh, boy, those were some one-sided games. So Thorazine... This guy is a pretty big force to be reckoned with, and this might be pretty hard for MC because MC probably hasn't yeah. seen a lot of Thorzane games, and he doesn't have what I would call a stylistic way of playing. Yeah, uh, while we talk through this, I just want to remind the viewers to go to pokerstrategytsl3.com slash poll and uh, take a look at uh, the options and vote for who you think is going to take down this match, OGS MC. Uh, or pray Thorzane while uh, Artosis and myself talk through it. And I, as you said, uh, when we saw Thorzane taking on uh, Liquid Tyler, Thorzane didn't show one build that was like this new build that no one's seen TVP and suddenly took him down. He showed uh, three different, completely different styles. Uh, one nice timing attack, one Thor heavy build, and then just standard Marauder Marine. And the thing I like about Thorzane was in his post uh, interview with that match, he said, in the Teal Open, he tried that Thor build, and it got beaten by uh, Adele Scott, I believe, and the commentators were harsh on him, so he wanted to show that that build can actually work. So really a tenacious competitor there to to want to, A, take down Liquid Tyler, but B, show that, yes, my build does work, and I'm going to prove it on one of the biggest stages. And, you know, I, I do have to hand it to him. That's a uh pretty smart way to play against Tyler throwing in that Thor build you know that's not going to be as good against Adel Scott that's just going to have a lot of stuff uh, but definitely going to be a little bit better against Tyler who more often than not will make some ed extra sentries obviously Thor does not care about sentries sentries <laughs> are 
paper nothingness to a Thor. Um, so that shows us that Thorzane knows how to properly prepare for an opponent, and that is kind of a huge deal for a high-level player, especially Thorzane. This is like the dark horse of the tournament at this point, I think. Uh, you know, he's he's this guy that's kind of understated, uh, obviously very mm -hmm. good, no direct style that people can be like, oh, like Adel Scott, you know, he... He has a certain way of playing, and you can kind of prepare for that. Thorazane, not so much, and he's already shown that he knows how to prepare for certain styles. So, MC, definitely a stylistic player, a risk taker. Uh, can Thorazane properly prepare for this and take him out? I don't know, man. Let's see what the poll says. Yeah, and, and one thing I just want to mention, uh, which I was leading to with that Copenhagen comment, was that MC is in Europe, and that means... If you believe the lag excuse or not, that's not going to be an issue whatsoever as these games were played on the Europe server while MC was in Europe. So we don't have to have that dark cloud sitting over us. Indeed, that dark cloud is gone chill. There is nothing but sunlight and happiness <laughs> in this next match. Thorazine against MC. I'm actually so ridiculously stoked to see how this one goes. Will MC advance one more round? Or will Thorzane kill his next GSL champion? So it looks like... And, uh, oh, go ahead. Uh, I was just going to say, and if uh, Thorzane does manage to take out MC, does that mean he's taking out three GSL champions or just two? Uh, unless you're t counting Liquid Tyler as a GSL champion, then that would be two. Would be two. Well, MC has two championships, chill. You're oh. not, not playing around with my joke, man. Come on. Oh, oh man. God. You're ruining it's everything, Seventh chill. level joke. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like uh, the viewers believe in MC, but not by the margin you might uh, have thought. We're at seven, or excuse me, fifty-seven percent MC, forty-three for Thorzane. So a lot of people believing in Ford are power here today. I believe, chill. I think I that believe Thorzane too. I has what it takes. I mean, I if you are, take him. that is that is a brave prediction, I must say. Um, and I I gotta I gotta say, Liquid Tyler. I think is one of the absolute best Protosses. If you can actually take him out in a best of five, you know your stuff, man. That guy is some good. He does not take risks. Uh, will the MC risks pay off for him against Thorazane? I think that's what this is going to come down to. I definitely think Thorazane has a shot at taking it. Yeah, I agree too. So let's go ahead and move on to take a look at the uh, map pool that we're going to be looking at for this match as it's going to be different than our last series as well. We can take a look at some TLPD stats here. You can look at OGS MC's ridiculous percentage versus Protoss and Zerg, 88% and 84% in his last 25 games. However, a little bit weaker on the Terran side, only sitting at 60% and looking over at Thorzane not having uh, that much success against uh, the Terran sitting under 50%, but look at his Terran versus Protoss percent sitting nearly at 80%, 19 and five in his last 25 matches. So a nice, nice match to look forward to here, looking at the percentages. Yeah, uh, this definitely is going to be the weakest of MC's matchups. And really luckily for Thorzane, just recently MC did play in the GSL and fall down to the up and down matches via right. two games versus Polt Prime. And Polt really showed some ways to abuse MC. It's like, hey, randomly make a second barracks and put some pressure on him because... Well, the guy likes to expand when maybe he shouldn't. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Uh, looking at the map pool yet again, we're going to be starting on Shakur's Plateau, which we have not seen today, so that's going to be exciting. Of course, it's been modified to be cross positions only, so no backdoor shenanigans, despite how much you might like that. Then we're going to move on to Metalopolis, Zelnaga Caverns. Finally, if necessary, we're taking it back to Teldream Altar for game number four, and we're going to finish it off on Shakur's Plateau. Wait, that doesn't look right. The map says... <laughs> no, the map is Zelaga Caverns. No, wait. Crossfire? We're going to play all the games on Python. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll see what happens when we get to game five. Who knows? It could be anywhere. Maybe we're going to play on that ridiculous <laughs> yeah. map that has massive, uh, massive gold min minerals. Crossfire. We've gotten word from uh, the god in the tower hotbid. <laughs> the god in the tower. <laughs> well, chill. I am. I'm just so so stoked to see this. I do think MC. That that's that's my guess. You guess Thorazine. I'm guessing MC. But 
Oh, I could be wrong. I hope I'm wrong. I want to see Thorazine succeed. Such a great story. A really nice kid, by the way. I met him at Star's War in uh, China. He got to room with Tasteless. What a, both of them being very lucky about that. Because now, obviously, Thorazane, such an amazing Gosu at StarCraft Two. Yeah, and I think, you know, if you're wrong or I'm wrong, regardless, we're going to see some incredible games going forward in this series. So without further ado, we're finally going to launch into OGS MC, taking on Prey Thorazane right after this. <laughs> 